Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'm Keir, this is Joanna. We're thrilled to be able to share with you this evening about our experience in Africa, in the jungles of Gabon, and how our family, really a family in a foreign land, and what that looked like. And to get us kicked off, and to kind of give you a little bit of a background about who the Thielanders are, or who we were, who we're becoming, uh, Joanna's got a poem for you. Joanna. I wrote a poem for you today to tell our life story of our missionary lives and to give God the glory. Kira and I were raised in churches where missions was a focus. I grew up in Rochester, New York, and Kira grew up in Indianapolis. We met in Indiana while in college at Purdue. We met in Purdue's handbell choir. You can laugh, but it's true. <laughs> Engineers is what we both are by training. We are logical, practical. Engineers don't need much explaining. Caring for people, not computers, that is Kier's heart. So medical school was the next place to start. We moved to Indianapolis for medical school for four years. Surgery became something Kier loved. He made that very clear. After medical school to Cleveland, we moved for seven years. In 2002, our son Luke was born, another engineer. God blessed us with Sarah two years after that. She is girly and fun and quite a creative cat. A boy and a girl, our family is complete. Now where does God want us to plant our feet? Kira asked God, where should I teach? Whom should I reach? Or maybe someday, do you want me to preach? I read an email in our home the fall of 2003. The first line of the email seemed a bit strange to me. It read, if I were a surgeon, I would go. They needed a surgeon to help in bungalow. I read the email with zeal and a minute I did not waste. I paged Keir right away. He called me back in haste. How would you like to go to Africa, I said. Silence fell. Kier did not know what I had just read. We prayed about serving in Bongalow Hospital for one year. It really didn't make sense for two engineers. God, why would you call us to go so far away? We have no missionaries in our family anyway. And we don't like camping or caving or nature too much with the heat and the spiders that we don't want to touch? What about our kids in the rainforest? How will they do? God, we can take a little risk, but really? You want us to live in the zoo? Couldn't we stay right here in Cleveland and send money overseas? Couldn't we go every year for two weeks? Wouldn't that meet more needs? And God, we're 31. A bit late to be called into missions, don't you think? But if you had called us as kids, we'd gladly serve overseas. Wink, wink. I'm a social person, so are there extroverts way over there? It's foreign, it's dangerous, and who will cut my hair? Our questions of why turned into why not? Perhaps God had equipped us, believe it or not, we both took French in high school. That's the language of Gabon. So we'll have bonjour and merci to build upon. Be strong and courageous, God said to us. You can do this jungle life. You just need to trust. In 2005, we said a tearful goodbye. To France for language school, then to Gabon we would fly. Everything familiar was now left behind. On an adventure with God, that's the best kind. God reminded us of his promise to Joshua that is so true. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Here trained Christian African surgeons in the operating room, and we studied the Bible with the residents and their spouses right in our living room. I homeschooled Luke and Sarah, and we discovered rich treasures in Gabon. 
Our kids have an expansive worldview and appreciate diversity, a true testimony to the rock that they stand on. After 10 years of tropical flowers and gazing up at star-filled skies, the Good Shepherd led us back to this country, broadening our ministry eyes. Five years ago, before moving back to the U.S., we asked God the same questions, since this is his business. God, are you sure you want us to go way over there? <laughs> the U.S. is foreign now and dangerous, and who will cut my hair? Today, Luke's a college freshman, and Sarah's high school graduation is this May. To God be the glory. Lord, lead us and lead you, we pray. Thanks, Joanna. Pretty amazing. I may be a little biased, but I think she's amazing. <laughs> Maybe you caught the theme of her poem in our story, and I think it's probably similar for you as well. There's tension. There's trade-offs. There's challenges. And so for us, this family in a foreign land is really about how do you live in the tension? You're going to have it. In fact, I would suggest to you that you're living in tension right now. And whether you stay here, whether that's the United States or wherever here is for you, maybe it's Congo, maybe it's Guinea, wherever you stay, there will be tension. But it's the tension we're used to. That's what we know as a family. We know where to turn when we have challenges. It's our home culture. But when you're a family in a foreign land, it's not your home culture anymore. The tensions are different and we need to adjust. Not only are the tensions different, but the places we turn should also be different, where we find solutions to those tensions or how we learn to live within those tensions. But it's an amazing life also living overseas. In fact, one of the major benefits for us was time together as a family. And in fact, you recently got a, a note from a friend, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that note, Joanna? So we have friends that are both physicians and they've served overseas in Africa for two years and they're back here in the States now for a year. And she wrote me a letter just last week and two lines of the letter were super interesting and a great reminder for us. She writes, our second year overseas was difficult, but also very rewarding. And then she goes on to say, we are all looking forward to going back to Africa, where despite the different stresses that we experience there, we actually are together as a family a lot more. And she underlined a lot more. I think that was also an example for us or a reminder. That was our experience as well. It was a different rhythm. In each place that you may go, there's a different rhythm. And if you want to live within that rhythm, you see what the other people are doing. And you, you watch them and you do that. Otherwise, you're going to take your tensions from where you came and encounter new tensions and try to handle them all at once. Mm -hmm. And those tensions in that level are just very difficult to overcome. For us, what did that extra family time, we'll call it extra family time, look like? So for me, I came home for lunch. I don't know many surgeons who come home for lunch almost every day, at least not many that I know that live in the United States. It might have only been 10 minutes, but it was 10 minutes of touching base with my family, mm -hmm. saying hi to the kids, and just making a little contact point. Or if a day ended early, maybe I would get home and say, hey kids, do you wanna to go to the pool? Okay, we, we, we call it a pool. You might have called it just a hole in the ground, but I think it was a pool. We went to the pool. Our kids thought it was a pool. Mm -hmm. Or the tennis court that, well, maybe it was just a slab of concrete, but it was the size of a tennis court or some other activity that we could do. Time to be with my kids in ways that I would never have had here. Or I could invite Luke along, our son, when we were going to do some other project, like fixing the internet problems, or maybe we needed to take a look at the generator. Not that I knew anything about generators, but the second set of eyes is never hurts from the maintenance guy to ask when he asks you. So you can involve your kids in those things in ways that you just can't do here in the United States or wherever you may be. Tension, 
You're going to live in it. Will it be here or will it be there? And sometimes the tension that we live with here is often external. So we learn to say, at least in the United States, we learn to say no. I'm too busy, I have too many things going on. It's pressures from the outside. When you move overseas, a lot of those tensions are now internal tensions. We feel that pressure to do more things because there's always something to do and yet nothing to do all at once. For us in the jungle, there was no place to go, but there was always some work to be done. Could I say no to that feeling of, oh, I need to do some work? We were confronted with this one night actually by our kids. Joanne, you want to tell them about that? Sure. Both uh, Kira and I were busy working on our computers. I was overseeing the visitor ministry, so emailing people who were coming on a short-term trip. Kira was taking care of a lot of other emails, and we were both on our computers. One of our kids walks into our office and says, Oh, Mommy, Daddy, you're busy again. You're writing emails. And then they left the room, and we thought, you know, they're making a really good point, and we were far too busy on our computers answering these emails, when in reality, the email could wait till tomorrow, it could wait till the following week, but at the time, we felt like we had to get those done right then, and it was a wake-up call for us, and we really then restructured and reprioritized and said, we can answer some emails, but then we need to put that on hold, spend some time with the kids, play with them, be a family and enjoy the family time together. Yeah, and I think that's the example as I was trying to help us all understand or be reminded of that those tensions were from within. No one else was telling me I needed to answer emails that night. I felt that pressure for whatever I thought I needed to do. But God gave us another option and he spoke through our kids, which he so often does if we're willing to listen. And thankfully in that case, we did listen. Can't say I always have, but in that case we did. There's another tension that we have, and that is what's going to happen to our kids? Have we kind of messed them up by living in the jungle? Like they don't, maybe they're gonna be socially, like they're just not gonna get it. Like did we, did we take them out of their own, like growing up culture, so they're third culture kids, and, and what have we done? And I think that's probably how we all feel, whether you've taken your kids over to another culture or you're going to, or if you're in your home culture, am I doing the right thing as a parent? It's a tension we live in. I think there's a great quote from a guy named, who wrote the book, uh, Everything I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And what he says is, don't worry that they, that's your children, that they aren't listening to you. Worry that they are always watching you. And what were our kids watching us do that evening? They were watching us write emails. Is that the message we wanted to send to them? So we wondered when we moved back, how, how are our kids going to do? What did they think about having grown up in the jungle now that they've been back in the States? And Joanna's had a couple conversations with them. You want to tell us a bit about those conversations? Sure. So I talked to our daughter, Sarah, and asked her, what was your perspective? Because as adults and mom and dad, we have one view of life in the jungle, but you were raised there from ages two to to 12, you were growing up there. So what was that like? And she said, well, that was all that I knew and it was normal for me. So for her, growing up in the jungle was a normal thing. And then our son, Luke and I got into just a real casual conversation one night, maybe about eight, nine months ago. And he said, mom, I know that life in Gabon for you and dad was very different from your childhood and from anything that you had planned for, but for Sarah and I, we called it home, and generally speaking, I had a blast there. And it was so, there were tears in my eyes when he told me, and I said, Luke, I appreciate you telling me how wonderful your childhood was and that generally speaking, you had a blast there. So many great things from our kids have come from their 10 years in the jungle. We've heard from a number of our colleagues, some of those who are a bit older, say raising children on the mission field is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing that you can do for your kids. We doubted. We weren't quite sure. Was that really true? And I think these words from our son, un unsolicited, he just brought that up one evening. Mm -hmm. I think drive home the, the reality of that 
that it is a wonderful place to raise kids. Mm -hmm. Now, every, everybody's situation is different. Our mission field was the middle of nowhere in the jungle, legitimately. If you want to go there, it just takes a long time to get there, but I would take you there. But that's not true for everyone. Yet your kids are looking at you and they will watch how you handle these things. Whether you're here in the United States where we are now or whether you're overseas somewhere, your children are watching. So how do we help ourselves stay on track? One of the ways we did that is we sought out mentors. Mm -hmm. I mentioned some older missionaries that had talked about them raising kids and how that was great. They thought it was wonderful to raise kids. But we had a, a local mentor, someone who could teach us the culture and not just the culture of like, how do I act as a physician, but a, the culture of how do you act as a family? What does that look like in their culture, whatever their culture is? And how do we integrate into that? And as I mentioned, how do we live in the tension and look for the solutions to the tensions in that culture, rather than taking all of our tensions, plus the things we think we wanna do from our home culture into a new culture, which has all of its own tensions. Mm -hmm. So the theme here of a family being in a foreign land is about living within that tension. God gives you the strength to do it. He gave us the strength to do it. And if we can do it, anybody can do it. I can tell you that. If we can live in the middle of the jungle, uh, anybody can do that. Just a few other things that we, we were able to do, and, and I would say that Joanna is really the driver of this. She makes everything fun. Everything is fun. And so to take that perspective, to embrace wherever you are, to say, what is positive about this place? Hmm. What can we do here? We went to a place called the Bongola Water Park. I don't know if you have that picture and can put that up. We called it the Bongola Water Park. You may look at it and say, I think that's just a river. But it was a water park to our kids. It was a blast. We had Butterfly Paradise that we called and went there as another little stream. Uh, we watched driver ants on the road sometimes. We took advantage of the opportunities that the Lord provided us living in that environment. There's another recent story that we had about raising kids that we talked uh, about with some friends when they were over yes. of our kids' friends. So you want to tell that one? And sure. So we were working a puzzle the other day, just a few weeks ago, and some new friends came and started working the puzzle with us and they said so tell us about living in the jungle and how was it like and what was it like you know for for the kids and how did that parenting go and i thought for a minute how do you describe this super different kind of place this mission station and our kids were able to just go and be free and i said well i think the closest thing would be we would call it free range kids and I said, you've heard of free range chickens? Well, we had two free range kids who just could walk out the door, throw their flip flops on and just go. And so there they were, Luke and Sarah, just running to different missionaries' houses, running down to the hospital, running here, running there. And we had two wonderful free range kids. Yeah, and I thought maybe that sums it up. We had free range kids in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> I don't know that we have many free range kids today anymore. We have kids on phones. We have kids sitting playing computer <laughs> games, but free range kids, it was amazing. So that tension got translated to an opportunity to engage our children and ourselves and grow our marriage. Our marriage has never been the same and that's good. It's, it's better than it was ever, has yes. ever been in, in 10 years in the jungle. Joanna's gonna wrap us up with another poem. Just tells a little bit more, maybe challenges you a little bit, some things to think about as you consider whether God is calling you as a missionary family to be a family in a foreign land. So now you've heard a bit about us. It's time to talk about you and it's time to discuss. Do you like to read but don't know where to start? Read Love Does and be inspired by Bob Goff's Big Heart. Do you wanna capture your purpose and rediscover your joy today? Get a copy of his new book, Undistracted. You can get it right away. Instead of asking the whys, ask God, what now? He blesses those who follow him, and he'll always show you how. Since Jesus is always with us, and we are never alone, what is he saying to you? Perhaps it's your time to roam. M3 stands for Mobilizing Medical Missions, as you know. 
We're praying that God would show you exactly where to go. So what questions might we answer to help you on your journey? Ask about our jungle pets or the story of runaway gurneys. Take the next step with God. He'll always see you through. Today, God is calling. And where is he calling you? Thank <laughs> you.